somebody was on their way to the house of prayer and didn't quite make it. situations and our circumstances. We bless you. In spite of what it looks like, we bless your name. We thank you for being an all-knowing and sovereign God. We thank you for knowing the end of the plan even before the plan began. We thank you for your grace and your protection and your love and your provision. Sometimes it may not be what we want or what we think it should be. But God, we thank you anyhow. We thank you that this morning, even as we rose and opened our eyes, it may not be into sunshine and roses, but it wasn't the cooling board. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yet another opportunity to do it right. We thank you for every church that stands open proclaims the gospel of Jesus Christ. For in such a time as this, we need your word like never before. We're confused, we're broken, we're, we're tired. And we need help. Send your word like the latter rain, God. Refresh us once again. We lift up the woman of God that will be given the word today. Pray for you to speak as only you know how. For the words, the utterances, that are from the depths of your spirit. That we would not only be hearers, but also to be doers. Give us just a little bit more just to keep going a little bit further. So we need you, Lord, like never before. Cover us. You know each and every single and individual situation in this place. Move by your holy power. It's not by the wind, but it is by your spirit. We pray, Lord, that you just continue to just hold us fast. In these last hours, Lord, we lift up the bereaved. So many accidents over across through the week. So many children have lost their lives to automobile accidents. And Lord, we lift up those families. Give them peace and comfort as only you can. It's an unimaginable pain to lose a child. And especially at the hand of someone so negligent. We lift up those families, those children that were less than a mile walking home and were struck by a drunk driver. 
We lift up that father who had to go and give the news to his wife that all of their children were gone. Be with them. That not only they prepare to celebrate the holidays, but now they're preparing to bury their children. Feel the emptiness. Massage the anger. And give peace and healing to the brokenness. Lord, move on the heart of that driver. that he will be so moved that whatever he's using that vice of alcohol for, that this will be a wake-up call for him. Yes, and that he will seek help. Restore our hearts. Restore our communities. Yes, the brokenness even in our own individual families. Yes, you know what it is, oh God. prepare to go into this season celebrating the birth and the gift of Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, to remember the reason why you came. To restore the brokenhearted unto the Father. We just give you all praise. In glory. In Jesus' name, amen. scripture this morning will be coming from Acts. That's Acts chapter 20. And now we're reading your hearing verses 7 through 12. And the word of God says, and upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. And there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. And there sat in a window a certain young man named Judas, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. And Paul went down and fell on him and embracing him said, trouble not yourselves for his life is in him. When he therefore was come up again, had broken bread and eaten and talked a long while, even till break of day. So he departed. And they brought the young man alive and were not a little comforted. May the Lord and a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Amen. 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 You may be seated.
And I'm hoping you realize the awesomeness of your presence right here, right now, before an awesome God. He's been merciful. Maybe you all have been good all your lives and you're good right now, but he's been merciful. All the evilness that's going all around us and we're still here. We still have a semblance of our right mind, but sometimes we find it hard to say, thank you, Jesus, for this day. Thank you, Jesus. I'm trying to hold back my emotions. I tried to get it out before I got up here at home, but just to think of his love for us. He gave me a word, and I'm praying that I give it to you like he gave it to me, because it was for me as well. I know we're all anticipating a great hallelujah service, but sometimes it's just one of those times where we have to think of his goodness and what he has in store for us. He's been good. He's still good. Breathe on us. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. giving honor to the pastor in her absence and all the persons of this fellowship and thanking God for another day that he's blessed us to see. Yeah. Our scripture today came from Acts 20, verse 7 through 12, has been read and I'm going to read it in the NIV version. And it says, on the first day of the week, we came together to break bread. Paul spoke to the people. And because he intended to leave the next day, kept on talking until midnight. There were many lamps in the upper room where we were meeting. This is Luke speaking. Seated in a window was a young man named Eutychus who was sinking into a deep sleep as Paul talked on and on. When he was sound asleep, he fell to the ground from the third story and was picked up dead. Paul went down, threw himself on the young man, and put his arms around him. Don't be alarmed, he said. He's alive. Then he went upstairs again and broke bread and ate. After talking until daylight, he left. The people took the young man home alive and were greatly comforted. For the sake of a title, don't fall asleep. Don't fall asleep. The book of Acts journals the early Christian church after Pentecost. And here in Acts chapter 20, 
Luke records a situation that happened at church. Paul is about to leave town, but he wanted to make sure that the new converts understood the Christian journey that they were going to experience with this new following of Christ that Paul was speaking of. So he starts preaching that evening. And the word says he goes on and on till midnight. Now I know for most of us, Paul would have been preaching to the pews after about an hour. But they knew this could be the last time they heard the word of God preached by such an anointed man of God. So they pressed as he kept on preaching. But Luke's attention was drawn away from Paul and began to focus on this young boy. Now I found it strange out of all the people Luke mentioned in his writings, he decides to tell the name of this young boy. You see, in Luke 7, there was a woman of name. And it says, Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said unto her, Weep not. And when the Lord saw her, he came and touched the bride. And they that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And he delivered him to his mother. No mention of a name. And in Luke 8, a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which has spent all her living upon physicians, <coughs> neither could be healed by any, no name. Then there was Luke 18, the rich young ruler. No mention of a name there either. Of all the people to get their names in the Bible, a young boy that falls asleep at a church service, he gets called out by name. Eutychus. Now I know if you're like me, the first thing I thought after hearing this was he should have been ashamed of himself to fall asleep at church. But if we're honest about it, we've all had one Sabbath that we found ourselves not enough during service. And when we caught ourselves, we looked around to make sure no one else saw us. It happens to the best of us. So I ask the question again, why is this story in the Bible? 
this young boy named Eutychus falling asleep in church surely is not to say don't have evening service or maybe don't preach long sermons of which you never have to worry about that with me. <laughs> 10 or 15 minutes on a good day and we're good. And on a bad day, it even uh, includes the appeal. But I digress. And I'm sure the reason Luke mentioned this story was not to say Paul was a boring speaker. If it were so, everyone would have been asleep. But he mentioned only Eutychus. Even the disciples, God's chosen people, weren't exempt. Remember in the Garden of Gethsemane, Peter, James, and John were told to tarry here while he goes out and pray. And when he returned, he found them asleep. Not just once, but three times. So again, I say, we shouldn't be so hard on Eutychus when even the disciples in the presence of Jesus fell asleep. As I look back over the, this patches of scripture, there's one clear, glaring issue that comes to mind. It wasn't so much of the fact that Eutychus went to sleep. It was where he chose to sit. Of all the places in the upstairs room, why would he choose to sit in an open window? Why would you sit in such a dangerous, dangerous place? When you're in church, but you still have open windows, when you're in church, and yes, you've got attendance, but God doesn't have your attention. When you're in church and you have open windows, it's only a matter of time before you go from a window to a fall. Because you've got to be careful where you sit in the house of God. Eutychus, why would you sit in such a dangerous place? Many of us are like Eutychus. We're in church. You see, Eutychus is not in a club or out doing illicit things. Eutychus came to church but he picked a dangerous place to sit. He had some open windows in his life, even though he was in the house of God. Your intentions get you in the room, but your attention will keep you in the room. It's not enough just to come to church You've got to be careful where you sit. Truth be told, some of us in here today are sitting in an open window. You know you're sitting in an open window when you try to get close as you can to the edge of sin without sin. It's getting a little drunk Sin, or telling a white lie, is that sin? 
This scripture reminds us that it's a terrible thing to fight sleep in an open window. The issue wasn't his sleep. It is where he was sitting. Have you ever seen a baby fight sleep? We look the same way when we are fighting sleep. Tossing and turning and I know for myself, as I've grown older, and some of you may be able to relate, I can sit down in a chair, watching TV, or reading a book, and the next thing I know, I'm asleep. I didn't even know it. No warning, just sleep. Remember earlier, I mentioned the disciples in the garden, and when Jesus came back to them, they were sound asleep. Do you remember what he said? He said, watch and pray. Be careful that you don't fall into temptation. That's a strange thing to say to someone that's sleeping. What does temptation have to do with sleeping? He continues to say, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He's given us a metaphor that the same way that when you're fighting sleep in the natural, there's a war going on with your spirit and your flesh. And just like the disciples who had the best intentions, we'll fall asleep. If you're not careful, you'll fall asleep even now. First Thessalonians 5 says, Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep, as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Romans 13 says, verse 11 says, And that, knowing the time, that now is high time to wake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. So our scripture today is to warn us not to fall asleep. Don't get distracted by our everyday culture. Something we need to remember is if I don't know I've fallen asleep in the natural until someone wakes me up, could it be possible that I might fall asleep spiritually and not even know it? You know you are falling asleep spiritually when you have little or no desire to pray. You know you're falling asleep spiritually when you've lost your appetite for the Word of God. You know you're falling asleep spiritually when you're no longer convicted of a willful sin. You might be getting sleepy spiritually if you isolate yourself from fellow believers. You see, the enemy wants you to be isolated so he can put you to sleep. But that's not the end of it. When he puts you to sleep and you're isolated, you have no one there to wake you up. 
It's a dangerous thing to fall asleep. Some of us have fallen asleep and may have even given up on our life's goals and families and friends and situations. We've got disappointment in our lives, discouragement, even to the point of death. But I'm so glad that the scripture doesn't end there. For it says, Paul stopped preaching, went down, threw himself on the young man, put his arms around him, and he said, don't be alarmed. He's alive. Don't you know Christ has done the same thing for us? We've fallen asleep. Some of us may not have fallen to our death just yet. But we're just that close. Just like Paul restored the once dead boy, Christ came for a dying world. He decided to intercede on our behalf. He's standing between us and God, saying, my blood is sufficient for their sin. And he's still interceding even today. Don't fall asleep. Don't let the everyday toils and tears and things that we're going through love us away from hearing from God. He's speaking even now. But just coming to church, just checking off the boxes, saying, I've done this, I've done that, doesn't mean you're not asleep. It only means that you're just going through the motions. If you're not in tune with his will, you're falling asleep. Don't fall asleep. Don't let the enemy lead you astray. He's interceding. Don't let it be in vain. Amen. Don't fall asleep.
Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for interceding on our behalf. We thank you that you've given us this opportunity to hear from you. I pray that those that have heard your words will hearken to the call upon their lives and know that you're interceding on our behalf to give us this day's journey one more day, one more time, one more breath to go forth in your name. Jesus, we do pray. Amen. 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 And for those that are watching, you may call in on our prayer line, 1-866-395-6873. That's 1-866-395-6873 for our prayer line. God loves us. And even as we're going through this holiday season, celebrating with families and friends, just know that it's because of him interceding that we're still here. 